Okay, welcome. So this is session two of EdCamp Home. We're talking about digital workstations for readers workshop. So welcome, Stephanie and Marquette. Welcome. Thank you. So Stephanie, uh, you said you used uh, digital workshops before? I did. Yep. So um, in my first years doing readers workshop, and I teach fourth and fifth grade in East Palo Alto, California. Um, I didn't do anything digital really. I had different kinds of stations where kids were doing reader theater and practicing reading with fluency um, or um, doing different things with um, with figurative language and, and trying to find similes and, and, and doing different kinds of little activities, types of things you would find at Lakeshore, um, basically to keep them busy so I could pull small groups for guided reading or other things. Um, and then I started filling out grants to be able to get iPods and iPads for my classroom um, and now have enough devices for kids to share. Um, so now they work with a partner during that hour block of Reader's Workshop and I pull small groups and they have different um, activities that they're doing and apps that they use. Um, for example, at our science station they might be assigned a brain pop video to watch. Um, and if you haven't used Brain Pop before, it has really um, excellent instructional videos. They have a free video every day, and then um, you can pay for their service or find a password online somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so they, they would watch that video and fill out a quiz or write about their learning there. And I, I had a bunch of different stations, probably about 10 different stations that they'd go to, um, two or three stations a day. Um, every day this would happen. And um, in, the, in the past two years that I've done this, i focused a lot on um, apps and kids um, have been consumers of uh, technology and using apps. Um, but this year I'm interested in getting them to create um, during this time and, um, and show their learning and work on things that they're interested in instead of just consuming information in apps. So that's kind of where I'm at. How about you guys? Um, I teach ninth grade English and we're on 43 minute periods so I'm always trying to shove as much as I can. I flip mm -hmm. my classroom as well okay. um, and we do BYOD so, and I can be one to one when I can be. So a lot of those same issues that you have with um, you know, access to devices, I have that as well. And then trying to do guided reading with them. Um, being able to recognize all the literary elements, we do that as well. Um, I'm really interested, though, in setting up, like, in, within the classroom space, ways to make it more asynchronous so that the students can be at, like you said, different stations um, doing whatever tasks. Do you have them use, so they're using school-provided devices, Steph? Yeah, that's also something I'm interested this, in this year is doing a, uh, a little bit of BYOD. Um, and um, as of right now, though, I've only ever used my um, like 10 or 11 iPods that I've um, purchased with grants and two iPads. Um, but I, I'm also interested in doing BYOD this year. It's tough. Um, we'll, um, I, I teach in, a, um, in kind of an inner city environment. Um, so we do have to worry about um, protecting kids' property a little bit when they bring something in, either on the bus or walking to school. It could be um, a concern for them to be carrying expensive devices and leaving in the, them in the classroom and making sure it puts a lot of pressure on me to make sure that my door is always locked if I, if I take the kids out for recess. Um, but that's something I'm interested in doing this year, too. Have you guys done any um, bring-your-own-device um, work with your kids? Yeah, I can chime in here. My district has um, a pretty interesting BYOD policy. So we have a, um, a stoplight in each of the classrooms and in the hallway. And basically any common space, like a hallway or a library or a cafeteria or a study hall, is a green light. So they can use their devices for whatever it is they want to use. Um, and then teachers get to decide what the, what the tenor is going to be in their own classroom. So. Um, you know, if I'm taking a test, for instance, I might make it go red. You know, I want you to use, you know, unassisted test is how I word it. Um, sometimes I'll leave it bright green and let them use, you know, the internet or collaborate with a friend to get their answers. Um, but that's kind of an interesting policy. 
that um, my district claims they came up with. So I don't know how true that is, but uh, it's a pretty interesting one. So we use BYOD in my district, and I also um, am lucky enough to have a, um, I wrote a grant, so I got a class set of iPads, which led pretty quickly to us publishing a wiki. Um, was kind of how I approached this digital workstations in Reader's Workshop. I found it was a good way to, um, you know, we always talk to the kids about what happens in the real world, right? Right. Um, publishing online kind of made that happen right now. You know, we, there was no, like, when you're in the real world, plagiarism is a problem. No, you need to pull that down. We're going to get in trouble. Yeah. So um, my, there was a steep learning curve. This was with juniors. I should have mentioned that. Juniors um, in an English class as well. Um, not everybody loved it, but it was kind of a, I made it a non-negotiable method by which we were collaborating, and I would say probably, you know, 85-90% eventually got on board, so I'm going to I'm gonna work to try to get the rest of them on next year. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Yeah, um, I actually let my students use devices during uh, tests and quizzes, um, but I give them, like, the time factor so that they can't just go and... Uh, Google every answer, and plus most of the stuff is asking them for their response to it, so it can't be uh, a Googleable response. Right. Right. <laughs> well, do you guys um, have any sort of liability if a, if a device is lost or stolen and you've asked or encouraged kids to bring them in? Oop, hold on. Sorry. Can we hear you? Uh, can you hear me? I think I, I just hear missed Marquette's. Trying to I can hear on. you. Try now. How about now? There we go. Yep. Yay. <laughs> I'm still new to this. Um, what was it? Oh, um, we we haven't had much of that happen. I'm in um, a suburban, fairly affluent district, so that might be why. I don't I don't really know what our policy is on that sort of thing. I imagine we'd go through the typical like disciplinary procedures, you know, mm -hmm. file a loss report. But I don't know how it would come back if I said, you know, hey, bring in your iPhone and it goes missing. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, ours is part of our acceptable use policy. It's um, and it pretty much says that uh, it's at your own risk. Like if okay. you choose to bring stuff in and it gets lost, broken, or stolen, uh, the district is not liable for it. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's pretty much yeah, it's at your own risk to bring it in and. And again, it's also a teacher's discretion to let the students use the devices. So it's not an automatic given that they're allowed to, you know, just have their smartphones out. Right. Because I have some that just choose to want to play uh, games the entire time. Right. Not do the work, but it's a battle. Yeah, definitely. So um, what kinds of things have you had kids doing during um, Reader's Workshop on their devices? Um... On my end, not so, I don't do so much the Reader's Workshop format, mm -hmm. but I'll do different activities with the devices. Um, you know, for Mice and Men, I set up a like a round the room kind of scavenger hunt mm -hmm. where they uh, went to different stations. Um, you know, at one station was a QR code that they would read an article online, scan the code, read the article online, and then answer questions on a worksheet. And then another station was... Um, using their device to record a conversation and um, using idioms from a mice mm -hmm. and men. So I, I did kind of different um, station activities with their devices and they worked in partners to get more background information and to use information from the text. Yeah, I use them um, a couple different ways. Um, in one case, trying to build a schema for some of the work we were reading, I actually used the devices to go on a um, Google Earth field trip is how I worded it. Um, so for instance with my seniors we were reading Heart of Darkness and they were really struggling with why so much attention was being paid to the river and the setting and um, it occurred to me they really just didn't have the background knowledge to understand what Conrad was trying to say about Africa at that time period. So we took a Google Earth field trip um, after they'd read a little bit, enough to know they were confused, let's put it that way. Um, and then, you know, basically I just told them, tell me what you notice. And um, as they zoomed in and in and in, they found, you know, that there were lots of, lots of twists and turns in the river. Um, and I said, okay, how might that affect the plot? And they were able to talk about how you might get turned around. They were really, really um, 
interested to look for what they called, you know, civilization, um, mm -hmm. which led to another interesting conversation, of course. But, um, you know, they were looking for cities, and, you know, they found huts by the river. And I pointed out that, you know, the maps we were looking at were not particularly old. They certainly weren't, you know, the maps that would have indicated Conrad's world. So that, that was a nice way to do that. Um, have you, either of you used subtext as an app? I have. I love it. Um, the only issue is that it's only compatible with an iPad, and I only have two iPads and 26 students. Um, yeah. I have a lot of iPods, but I, I don't think they've released an iPad-compatible version, but I, um, that would be my dream, to be able to use that a lot. It's, it seems really fantastic. Um, I use a reading app. It's not subtext. Um, it's called a go uh, Gobstopper, and it's a Web 2.0 tool. Have you guys heard of that yet? I think you may have mentioned it to me before, Kate, but I haven't looked at it, actually. Uh, what they've done is taken text from the, uh, from the public domain that are all free, and they've loaded it into their e-reader format, and then the teacher can customize it with questions, annotations, insert quizzes. Um, it's pretty... F I've been very happy with it that you can um, get some data back, and let me screen share so you can take a look. So it's totally free for now. They're in beta testing right now. And okay. um, once you go in, you can assign the text. I should have signed it quick. Come on. There we go. So I used it for reading Pygmalion. Romeo and Juliet this past spring with my ninth graders. And uh, it's not devices yet, but they're going to have um, a mobile app released in the fall. Oh, cool. But, oh, this is going so slow. Probably because the Hangout's on. They have a summer reading program, too, FYI. Nice. Um, that it will do everything for you. Everything's already done. You just assign the text. And then when you open it up... Um, I'll just so you can show you what I've been working on. Um, you get, oh, this is taking forever. I don't want to take all the time talking about it. Um, and once, oh. well, this is what it looks like once you go in to a text. You get to see how many questions are in it, how many annotations, how many quizzes. And then this is what it looks like. Get a second. I'm getting in there. I've been so excited just to have this as an e-reader option because I've tried using the cloud Kindle reader, and uh -huh. I never know for sure if they're actually reading the text. So at least this way, I, I do get a definitive um, you know, answers, how well have they read it, how well have they understood it, and then it just loads it nicely into um, this book here, and then you get little icons for it to pop out with a question. Um, Very cool. Which is nice. So I've been thrilled with this, mm -hmm. and the annotation feature is one of my favorite things, because um, you can load videos, images, um, and have oh, wow. just to be, it's all that stuff that you're trying to tell the kids while you're yeah. reading. Um, and now it makes it that they can go at their own pace. All right, so that's, um, that's Gobstopper. Very cool. That's pretty neat. That looks like it, it looks very similar to subtext, but stuff I've had the same problem you did. I have the iPads, but they're not one to ones, they're just a cart. So, you know, my, I tried to assign something using subtext, then of course the kids are like, oh, I can't get to it from home, and that's true. So maybe right. Gobstopper would be a, a, good, a good thing to use in the meantime. Um, have you tried subtext through Edmodo? Because I know Edmodo has that. Oh, you're right. I have, yeah, I have. I have to confess, I'm not a huge fan of Edmodo. I, I don't know. Any of those, like, Facebook for Education stuff, like, let's just use a real deal. So... Oh, I don't know. No. I know. I, I know. love Edmodo. <laughs> yeah, I'll try I it. Edmodo. Um, oh, Kate, can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Um, my friend, um, uh, I think her name's Maricela in her G+, um, added you. 
Um, okay. Can you see that? Do you have that notification on your main page? Maricela, is that it? Yep. Aha, found her. Perfect. Is it possible for you to add her here now? Yep. And then awesome. I'll add her to us. Okay. Fantastic. I think she'll be able to join us. Cool. Um, yeah, so back to Edmodo. Um, I started out using Edmodo when I first did um, like a digital style blended workshop. Um, just as kind of an accountability piece. Um, kids, for example, in the, the science station where they'd be using um, Brain Pop, they would have to take a screenshot of the results from their quiz and load that to Edmodo so I could see how they did. Um, or if they were um, on a creation app doing some kind of art, like on um, Doodle Buddy or something like that, and they were making and illustrating a metaphor, um, they would take a screenshot uh, or upload the, the photo to Edmodo so I could kind of use it in that way. Um, mm -hmm. But I have a really sweet group of kids um, this year and I'm keeping them, uh, or this past year and I'm keeping them this year. And um, uploading to Edmodo took them a little while and I knew that they were doing what I wanted them to do. Um, so I kind of just said, you know, spend your whole time working on your, your project and learning and, and I kind of took out the Edmodo piece because it was taking time away from what they were actually doing. Um, but it, it's tough because I like to see what they're doing, not, not to, to stay on top of them and make sure they were doing it, but to, to just see the cool stuff that they're doing and be able to post it on Twitter and, um, or blog about the stuff that they're doing. So um, I'm not sure this year. Um, we had difficulty with Edmodo. Sometimes it would take forever for even just a picture to load. Um, but with the new version of Edmodo coming out, maybe they've um, reworked some of their, their old um, bugs and such. So I'm, I think I'll look into it again this year. I've, I can't say enough about Edmodo. I have totally loved it um, because of the infrastructure with it. And, uh, you know, just... The yeah. convenience factor, the communication, you know, I just like that it's all in one shot deal for me. So it is like on the app, you can't do as much stuff like on a mobile app with it. Right. But I kind of overlook that for now and just hope that someday the app will be much better. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I have used it with subtext before. Um, I don't think you get all the full functionality of subtext with it. Um, I think you can post questions for them, but it, it doesn't post the actual text itself on Edmodo. Um, it assumes that they either have the book in front of them or they have it on an iPad somewhere. Um, I don't think Edmodo is allowed to, to feed the text of, of the book through. Okay. Um... Marquette, any um, other digital text that you've that you have used? Um, I use, tools that you like. Um, in terms of digital text, I've used Dogo News. Um, a current events site, and that also syncs with Edmodo. Mm -hmm. um, the the reading level on those are usually between like a fifth to eighth grade level. I find. Um, but it's nice for current events and for kids to be able to discuss current events. They also have Dogo books um, where kids can um, um, discuss books that they're reading, write reviews of them, earn badges and things like that. Um, kind of similar to Biblionasium if you've used that before. Um, but um, those are examples of digital text I've, I've used, I guess. What about you guys? What other tools have you used? Um, I guess the main one I ended up using last year, we leaned pretty heavily on Google Apps and education just in general for, you know, file sharing and, mm -hmm. you know, I think I'll use it next year even for, you know, book logs and reports and that sort of thing. Um, right. But the main, the main thing we did in terms of, like, um, 
actually collaborating outside of class and even in class was the wiki. Um, so my students, we, we were reading The Great Gatsby and um, before the movie. <laughs> and we, um, I, had, I signed each of them. I just kind of went through. I read it a million times. And I mined it for cultural illusions. And then I just had them draw one out of a out of a hat, and um, whatever cultural illusion they had, they may, had to make a three to five minute video um, using their good research skills that they then posted. Um, the goal was to post to the wiki, but then that ended up pretty um, heavy in terms of uh, content. Um, but it was kind of nice to have them be able to do some research into the background, and then I had them. So whenever uh, you know Meyer Wolfsheim came up and Arnold Rothstein, and I'd say, wait a minute, who, who did the video for that? And we could watch it. Um, but we ended up using the, the wiki. We were on wiki spaces. And if I were more confident with Google Hangout, I'd try a screen share, but I'm, this is my first one. So <laughs> um, we went to, on Wikispaces, they, um, we set it up basically a chapter at a time, and they had to make a log. Their homework, what I would have normally assigned, like write me what you understood about the book, ended up on the wiki. Um, and it just had to be there by midnight. And the thing, when I asked my students at the end of the year about it, they told me, um, some of them told me they hated it because they couldn't get around it because they knew I was going to check the wiki and I could see who was doing it. Um, the ones who really liked it, though, they told me things like they were able to see what their friends were thinking um, or they were able to benefit from someone else's insight, which is exactly what I was going for. So I think we'll use that sort of publishing tool in the future as well. thinking I might even have the students create, either by themselves or with a small group, their own wiki, maybe kind of stemming from our main wiki, on which they can include their their own reading logs and their own kind of um, you know personal reading as well because I think if I can find a system to share that sort of thing we can really increase the idea that you know smart people read and as a matter of fact we're all reading um, you know and then we'll have a way to look and see what each other's reading and you know suggest books so I really I really enjoyed wiki spaces cool. what, what about the look of wikis though because I when I've looked at wikis the the layout of it never really appealed to me what about that versus yeah. like a blog or kidsblog.org? Um, yeah. yeah. I, th I thought about blogging, and the thing that um, I ran into there was just that you couldn't, it was more cumbersome for me to have all of my students, like all 76 of them, on um, the same page or doing the same sorts of things. So I sort of addressed the, the aesthetics of Wikispaces by encouraging those who understood web design to make it pretty. And, um, so, there were a couple of like little widgets that showed up, but I think in all honesty it was a much bigger project than we really anticipated. Um, so they weren't as able as I had hoped to really, you know, I was really hoping it was going to end up beautiful at the end. It was pretty clunky. It ended up being just a, a place for us to share. Right. But I think next year if I show my students the last year's wiki and say, you know, they did a good work, but look at this. It's like a big long right. list. You know, that might encourage them to kind of think about the, the format as well as the content. Mm-hmm. Nice. Cool. Yeah, I've used kids, um, kid blogs um, a little bit. Kidblog.org, I think it is, or whatever one um, that you were mentioning, Kate. Um, and I didn't really stick with it. I, I might um, do that again a little bit um, this coming year. I'm not not sure yet. Does that allow for customization customization of, of the the space or no? I don't know. But um, yeah. but what problems did you have with it though that you didn't stick with it? Um, I just I was having kids write um, book reviews um, and recommend books to each other, and um, I didn't do enough work up front um, around buy-in and, and what this should look like. They weren't writing very high-quality reviews, um, and um, I only had a, a limited um, time for kids to be on the computer each day, so I decided that I could better use that time um, to help kids learn how to type. Um, or do other different kinds of activities. So I kind of um, put the kibosh on, on the kid blog. Um, but I'd be interested in revisiting it. How, how have you used blogging? That's on my list of things to do for this year. Um, yeah. We did a Google site where I loaded my students' essays on it and trying to get feedback. But it, um, we got some feedback, which was good, and we paired with Sam um, Patterson out in mm -hmm. Palo Alto. Right, and he had his students respond to my kids' essays, which was great. Um, but I really want to do more, more with it. But I wasn't sure of the structure. Like, if I do individual, that's a lot to manage. A hundred and thirty blogs. Oh, definitely. So, what about you know 
pairing up or group blogging, like putting a group together for a blog. And yeah, I don't know. I was trying to think about that structure too for it. Do you guys have any ideas on that? I, yeah, I made um the the wiki spaces does a lot. I mean, you can, can create small groups and then have like let's say five students in a group and you know what each one is responsible for. Then that would limit it. Um, I blog personally on WordPress, and I noticed that you can invite guest bloggers, um, and I really oh, like cool. that. So that might be another way to do it. And those, I mean, that's pretty. Those are lots of bells and whistles on uh, on WordPress. Right. So that might be another way to, to handle. But yeah, the workflow when you're monitoring digital work is uh, it's different. It's not harder, I don't think. It's just different than you know what I'm used to. <laughs> Uh, just checking our time here. Is that five minutes into the slam? Is that with um with the updated schedule, or they are putting that back on track? Yeah, when I just looked on the website, it says it starts at twelve fifty. I think that's California time, so I think we've got about two minutes. Okay, so I guess we'll wrap it up here. Um, I tried tweeting out a bunch of the links so far and Fantastic. the uh, tools that we've mentioned. So uh, make sure that you, if you have your own blog, because I blog on Blogger, so make sure we share that with the group too uh, sure. with Ed Camp Home. So thank you, ladies. It's Excellent. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. And yeah, you too, uh, I'll see you at the slam. All right, good. Let's be in touch. I, I think, um, I'm not sure if I'm following you on Twitter yet. I'll find you, but it, it'd be fun to, to loop back around uh, during the year and share out what we're doing. Yeah, that'd be great. Excellent. Definitely. Cool. All right, All you right. guys have a good one. You All right, too. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.